Jesus. All manner of blessings shall be our own portion in the mighty name of Jesus. As many that will be listening to us, even from on on even from their various homes or wherever they may be, let them be blessed in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, those of us who have made it here, who have defied the rain to come here. I pray that we shall not lose out in your blessings for us in the name of Jesus. Thank you for answered prayers. Blessed be the holy name. For in Jesus' glorious name we have prayed. Amen. Let's clap for Jesus for bringing us to his presence even this wonderful time. It is well. The devil is a liar. It is well. The devil will be put to shame. As it has been from time immemorial, so shall it be now and forevermore. You are welcome into the presence of the Most High God. Our topic today is titled good Sussex good success good success we have a lot of Bible passages to read we are thinking we are we are going to read Joshua 1 8 then we also take Proverbs 1 32 then we also read Proverbs 10 22 and then Psalm 1 1 to 3 we start with Joshua 1 verse 8. Joshua 1 verse 8. You are welcome. Today's topic is titled Good Sources. Good Sources. Joshua 1 8. That's a very popular Bible passage. Joshua 1 verse 8. I read from here. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein, for then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. This book of the law shall not depart of, out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Proverbs 1.32 Proverbs 1.32 Proverbs chapter 1, verse 32. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. For the turning away of the simple shall slay them, and the prosperity of fools shall destroy them. <laughs> Psalm 1, verses 1 to three. Psalm 1 verses 1 to 3. Blessed is the man that walk not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor seated in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And it shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth its fruit in its season. Its leaf also shall not wither. And whatsoever it doeth shall prosper. Wonderful. Good success. I tried to look at the, the meaning of success in the dictionary. Success is something that we all are used to. But a simple definition that uh, that caught my attention is that you say success is an event that accomplishes its intended purpose. An accomplishment of an intended purpose. And then it has some hyponyms like uh, you can talk about, you can refer to success as bon, ban burner, 
buy it. Wonderful. This one really caught my attention and I think is very relevant. It says God speed. God speed. So success could be said to be God speed. It will also be said to be triumph, victory, and so forth, and, and so on and so forth. But then, more importantly, the word says good success. And what does that mean? That means to say there could be some success that could be regarded as being a bad one. Praise Jesus. If there's a good success, that means there could be a bad success. The blessings of the Lord make it rich, and he had it no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord make it rich, and it adds not sorrow unto it. That's a very popular Bible passage. Brethren, it is only when God blesses one that no sorrow is attached to it. Praise the Lord. The devil, too, camouflages, masquerades by making people outwardly to look as if they are successful in the real sense of it. But there's nothing the devil gives. If the devil gives you something, that you might want to see as, you know, that is just a fake source, so to say, you will see a lot of sorrow and misfortune attached unto it. Praise the Lord. Where I'm coming from, I'm an African, to God be the glory. I, growing up in my area, I was perturbed to see some things, some things that does not look right going on. You see, thank glory be to Jesus. You see some people outwardly you see that they are wealthy. Because they seem to have a lot of riches that can that they can fly up and down. But I, I, I something struck me then that I observe some people that you see a beautiful mansion, an edifice. Somebody will erect an edifice, for example. By all standards, a fantastic edifice of a building. And you see, the person will not paint the building. I saw one, two, three cases like that. I begin to wonder, how much does a paint cost for somebody who could build an edifice and then the person will not paint? And I begin to ask questions. I mean, this person is so rich. Don't get me wrong. For some, when you are building a house, you could do the structure, the building in phases. You can actually occupy that place while still putting on those things that you want. Virtually, all the basic things that could make the place habitable for are there, you can move in and then begin to do some other things while you are there. That is reasonable. But for a man that lives in object, in, you know, in riches, so to say, that has cars, that has all those things, you begin to wonder, it's not as if the person cannot afford painting the house. Then I begin to ask questions. <laughs> then you know, some people now told, you know, told me that uh, most times such people, because they didn't make their money through the right way, maybe it's through some rituals, and then it's one of the dictates of the devil and his cause that gave such riches to such people is that they should not paint the house. Have you not heard of cases of a magnificent building that people live in and then they begin to, the devil <laughs> goes begin to pursue them in the night. I've heard of people renting a particular case, a place. But because they didn't have peace, they have to run away from the house. And then you begin to, those are some of the things the devil gives. The devil will not just give you something for free. He will surely make sure you are perpetually in bondage. To that money. That is the money 
that the riches that the devil gives. But if God gives you wealth, he blesses you and it will never have any sorrow with it. That is why it is always good to wait and pray for God to bless us. If he makes you rich, then he will not have any sorrow. Brethren, obedience to God's word is key to success in life. Obedience to the words of God is key to success in life. Human beings, the way we are wired naturally, we are wired to always ask questions, to always question why you should do a particular thing. Naturally, that is it. But whosoever that is in Christ, whosoever that has allowed the Holy Spirit to dwell inside of him, that listen to the direction of God is the one that will make success in life. Brethren, I just gave you an insight onto some devilish way of looking for money and then you begin to suffer. It's not worth it. Praise the Lord. And then do you know some people, they are so rich, but they are so stingy. The devil <laughs> that gave them money will tell them don't give. You see, such people, they won't give you money. No matter what, they prefer to spend, lavish that money, but for them to give you money for something worthwhile, they will never. And then you begin to wonder, this is a man that spends money lavishly, but even his own kindred, people from his own family, finds it difficult to give them money. What is the usefulness of a money that you have that you cannot use it to impact and positively into people's life? Praise the Lord. So when you see a man that is so tight-fisted, what does it <laughs> So tight-fisted and he seemingly looks rich, you need to watch it. Anyway, obedience to God's word is the key to success in life. Hmm. God, our God is a God of blessing. He desires for us to be blessed. But the important thing is that we need to obey his word for us to tap into those blessings. The blessings are open unto us. First and foremost, you must, be, you must believe in our Lord Jesus Christ for you to be able to tap into those blessings. Let's read Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 15 to be able to see the blessings that God as purpose for mankind. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 15, I'll be fast. Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 15, and it shall come to pass, if thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. What is acting diligently mean is to obey, to obey God. To observe and to do all his commandments which I command thee this day, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come on thee, and overtake thee if thou shalt hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of thy body, and the fruit of thy ground, and the fruit of thy cattle, the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. The Lord shall cause thy enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one day and flee from thee seven ways. The Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses, and in all that thou settest thy hand unto, and it shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God hath given thee. The Lord shall establish thee and holy people unto himself, as he hath sworn unto thee, if thou shalt keep the commandment of the Lord thy God, and walk in his ways. 
And all people of the earth shall see that thou art called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. And the Lord shall make thee plenteous in goods, in the fruit of the body, and in the fruit of thy cattle, and in the fruit of thy ground, in the land which the Lord sway unto thy fathers will give thee. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. Amen. The heaven to give thee rain unto thy land in a season, and to bless all the work of thy hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. And the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail, and thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, we shall command thee this day to observe and to do them. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day, to the right hand or to the left, to go after other gods to serve them. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day, and all these causes shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Then he begins to talk about the causes. That is not our point of reference. The important thing is look at all those blessings. But there is always a caveat. That is to say there is a condition. You see that it runs through. I keep saying, if thou shalt observe to do all these commandments. That is the proviso. That is the, that is the condition. That is the conditionality for you to swim in all those blessings. But God's promises is for us all to enjoy all those blessings. Deuteronomy 13.4 Deuteronomy 13.4 Are we there? Thank you, sir. Deuteronomy 13, verse 4. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Wonderful. And cleave unto him. So, you have to keep the commandment and obey the voice of God at all times. In 1 Samuel 15, 22, we are made to know that obedience is better than sacrifice. We all know that story of how Saul, the fantastic first king in Israel, wanted to do the promptings of his own people wanted to satisfy them and instead he did not heed to the commandment of God God said destroy everything he kept out some part of it <laughs> though he wanted to use it to as a sacrifice I mean, but you see I want to link that word sacrifice let's look at it critically in those days sacrifice with the sacrifice to animals the sacrifice animals to god but when christ came and shed his blood that replaces that but you see i want to look at this word sacrifice in a broader perspective even especially as it concerns us as believers god is interested in your heart God is interested in what is in your mind. So your intention for doing anything you are doing is very vital. Activities in God's kingdom is very essential. There's nothing bad about that. But do you, are you doing those things with the right intention? God does not, you know, take delight in activities that are not properly guided by and in tune with the commandments of God. So you may be doing a lot of things in the, in the, in the house of God, but if your heart is not right with God, honestly speaking, 
that is just a mere exercise and that is one thing i want to talk about when we look at people from africa there is a difference be between being religious and being truthfully righteous before god we pray yeah, the way the kind of probably because of the <laughs> of our experience there what we go through because most times most of them most of us have bad leadership and all stuff so it, it, it sort of makes us to clear to outwardly do some religious things the people when you see the way they pray there you know we don't pray yet when you see the way people go to church do all those things but you see and yet I'm sorry to say this. I'm not trying to judge anybody. But the Bible says by their, by their seeds you should, you will know them. By what they do, you will know. And then, sometimes that's what I always tell people. That if you look at the way many people, many black people are configured. Sometimes you begin to say, God, those, this, it's like these people deserve the kind of leadership that they get. I'm sorry to say that, word, but that's just the way I see it. Because the thing is so, uh, is really a, is, is compounded by so many things. The problem there is compounded by so many things. Anyway, the point I'm just trying to make is this. That you're being religious. You know, we said it. Is there everybody that comes to church that is truly a Christian, that is a born again? No. Some people just come to church because... It is a routine. You know, it's something they've been doing right from when they were young, but their heart is far away from God. And then we, they are, that's why they say we have mixed multitude in the church. So it's not everybody you see in the church that is genuinely a Christian. That's just the point I'm just trying to make. So that word sacrifice in modern day parlance could be turned to, you know, to you know we pay sometimes people pay lip service to the commandment of god in fact we can quote the bible from genesis to the Re revelation but are we truly the doer of god's word are we matching what we say what we profess by our actions brethren obedience to god's word is very paramount but also, there are some people, some things, some people we also need to obey. For example, children have been admonished to obey their parents in all things. If you see Colossians 3.22, it says, children, obey your parents in all. And that is a promise that is a commandment i also have a promise if you obey your parents what did he say so that your days will be long so which means that longevity is also attached to obedience to your parents and that is why you see anyone that knows the ways of god and the mindset of god even if you are a for as long as you are a believer, your biological parents, if you see have them, lucky you, even if they are not believers, you must do your responsibilities unto them. You must show them love and you must do whatever you are supposed to do for them while they are still on heart. So many of us, some people they tend to mix it and feel that because the person that has brought you into this world forget it and that's why you see some men of god even that have some parents who are still idol worshippers but they still perform their duties and responsibilities and that is not to say that except for whatever they do that is contrary to the commandment of god for example you are not supposed if your parents are idol worshippers you are not supposed to join them in doing idols or celebrating some idols. No. But you are still supposed to keep them 
uh, perform you know, your welfare responsibilities to them. That's just precisely what I'm trying to say. So we shouldn't mix it. And then, that you can find in Colossians 3.20, then in Ephesians 6, 1, it says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Your parents in the Lord. You see, <laughs> whosoever that is your spiritual father or your spiritual mother, you necessarily need to obey and show love and respect to them. And this is all a comparison regardless of your status because you know why these ones are god's representative and they saw so much in prayer for you they stand as a coverage as a covering for you so in any way you must try as much as possible that could be one of the reasons why many of us are not even doing very well financially prospering Probably you feel that whoever is your pastor, maybe you are older than him, or you feel that you economically you are better than him, and then you want to smite him and look down on that person. It's very wrong. The same respect you give to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, naturally you need to give to such people so that you'll be able to attain unto the heights that God has proposed for you. And also, in Hebrews 13, 17. Okay, let's read it. Hebrews 13, 17. So, I told you appear that we are just speaking with fables. That Hebrews 13, 17. Obey them that have the rule over you, and submit yourself for the watch for your souls, as they that must give account that they may do it with joy, and not with grief. For that is unprofitable for you. And that is why as a Christian, you need to pray for those who are in authority, even political authority and spiritual authority, have spiritual and political authority over you. You are supposed to pray. You see, there is no mistake with God. Whoever gets a, a particular or a, a position of authority over you, you must, in fact, as Christians, we need to always pray for such people. You see, uneasy lies the head that wears the crown. Most times, these people have a lot of, they are battling with a lot of things. Huh? You see, some of, somebody might mean well, but you see that when it gets to such, to such positions, they begin to fumble and do things contrary to what they actually have in mind. A lot of, they, they are battling with a lot of things. So, they deserve our prayers. We need to pray for those who are in authority. And then you need to obey the laws of the land, for example. You would say because as a matter of fact, if a good follower of Christ, then you must be one that followed the law strictly. You must not be seen to be a one that breaks the law. So the laws of the land must also be observed. And whoever is ahead of you, you need to respect such a person. Brethren, no one can tamper with the good sources that comes from God. For example, when you read Psalm 91, Psalm 91 is full of a lot of divine protection. Psalm 91. Okay, let, maybe let's just quickly go through that. Psalm 91. It's one Bible passage that I love so much. I think in those days, we used to learn it by art. It's Psalm 16, 91. is 16 verses. That's a psalm that is full of is the security of the godly. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will serve the Lord is my refuge and my fortress, my God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover me with his feathers, and under his wings shall I trust. His truth shall be my shield and buckler. 
I shall not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, for the, nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at my side, ten thousand at my right hand, but it shall not come near me. Only with my eyes shall I behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high my habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. For he shall give his angel charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear you up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and harder. The young lion and the dragon shall thou trample on thy feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he had known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. No one can tamper with the good source that comes from God. As he has assured us, his children of divine protection in Psalm 91. And that is why, brethren, if after a breakthrough, you are afraid of calamity, I want to assure that perhaps that breakthrough is not from God. If you, are, if you have a major breakthrough and you are still afraid of calamity, a child of God should not be afraid, should not be thinking of some negative things when you, are, you achieve a landmark breakthrough. Because knowing fully well that those breakthroughs come from God. But don't get me wrong. The Bible makes us to know that we have to be cautious. Hmm? You have to be cautious. My people say that when you're, oh yeah, let me put it this way. You know, um, yam, when you're on yam, it's blosomy. You have to, you, you don't, you, need, you must cover it. You don't allow, what I'm just trying to say is that we have to be cautious. When God is blessing you, it's not for a show off. That's not what I'm trying to say. It's not for you to want to show it off. But what I'm trying to say is that knowing fully well that that blessing is from God, then why should you then be afraid you know, that uh, maybe the enemies can take it away from you? No way. I read it the other time that God says, when God makes you rich, he does not have any sorrow unto it. If God gives you a car, if God is God that has given it to you, he has assured you that that car will not have any accident. For as long as you are in him and you are truly and genuinely in him, the Holy Spirit, you know, unlike some people, because they have gotten that it gotten well from another source, they may not. That's what we are trying to say. Because knowing fully well that you know that because you are a child of God, the protection of God, like a shield, is all over you. So you shouldn't say, because I know some people, you know, there are people that will buy a car and they will go and cover it. They won't use it. <laughs> but what is the essence of even some people will have houses. Now, I don't know. Of course, you can have a house, a property. For commercial reasons, you can let it out and be making money out of it. That's not what I'm saying. For the fear of the unknown, whether they feel somebody will kill them. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> ah, you know. <laughs> Even though my parents were not uh, most Christians then, I remember one, <laughs> you know, when we were growing up, my dad had a property, but we were living in a rented apartment. Thank God for the wisdom of my mom. But the man, the old man was struggling to move us to the house. Instead, he rented the house out. But my mommy of blessed memory at a stage I had to fight it out with him that ah, you have a relatively large family. Why must we now be staying in a rented apartment when we have a property? I mean, the man struggled with it for so long a time, but after some time, probably because that was basically the main source of income. So, and then because he has tall plans for we, the children, he wanted us to go to school. But sometimes when you look at some things, thank God for strong woman, mothers. She was able to, you know, convince my dad, and then we eventually moved to that house. You see, what I'm, the point I'm just trying to make here is that 
that was even nice. It wasn't as if because they, but you see, the point I'm just trying to make is that I've seen people like that. Just for the fear of the unknown, maybe they say they feel that they don't want somebody to kill them. They don't want people to know that they are the one that owns the house. How can you buy a car and then you just cover it and leave it like that? It doesn't make sense. Then why do you buy the car in the first place? If you cannot use the car and then you go and keep the car because you don't want people to see you riding the car, they are going to kill you. Who says? A child of God doesn't believe in all those things. I don't believe it. anybody can kill me. For as long as your ways is right with God, it's God that has given me this. So I should be able to... After all, my intention of having it is not because I want to show off. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Just like I, you know, I love fine cars. I want everybody to ride fine cars. You know, as much as God has blessed you, then you should be able to use it. Why should you have cars that you cannot bring out? Then why did you purchase them in the first place? That is foolishness. Praise the Lord. So that's just what I'm trying to say. That what is the essence of acquiring something and then you can't move into it for the fear of reprisal attacks from the enemies. Or from the, that's just what I'm trying to say. Does it make any sense? When we want to look at people who actually obeyed God, and because of that, they made good sources. The first person that comes to mind is our father Abraham. Our father Abraham, and that is why today is Abraham is referred to as a landmark reference when it comes to faith. Call him father of faith. This was a man. <laughs> he was born into an idol worshipping family. But God brought him out. Had to separate him away from his people. And then the, the, he's the father of nations. But that didn't happen on time. I think he became, he had Isaac at I think about 100 years or thereabouts. And God has promised me him about 25 years before then. He held on to it. And eventually when God, when God eventually, when Isaac, the child of promise came, what happened? They said God wanted to test him to show how much faith and trust he has in God. Ask him to sacrifice that only son. And you know one funny aspect of it? Do you know? <laughs> Even when, eventually, when he was going with Isaac, the, the time lag was much. Why? You know why? Before God eventually, you know, when God now saw that he was ready to slaughter the son, and then God gave him a ram instead. You know, the journey took days. Why? That was because God wanted to see that where he could he would change his mind. Already something could have taken place almost immediately, but there is a time, a long lifespan to see whether he would change his mind. But he didn't change his mind. The same thing for the child of promise, Isaac. You know, well, is it easy for some for father to take and say, I want to slaughter you? The guy too could have run away, but he didn't. These were people that believed and trusted in God. In the same way, brethren, what are we really doing for the kingdom of God? What are we doing in soul winning? What are we doing in evangelism? What are we doing in winning? Which is very central to the heart of God. I want to tell you one secret. I know everybody wants to be a miracle worker. But the major secret into being a miracle worker is what? Is winning souls for God. Christ said it. He said, when you go out in my name, and then you, all manner of healings happen. Why? Because you have gone out in my name. And he also give, you say, gives you an open check. If you win soul for God, ask me anything i'm ready to give unto you and that is why you see people that win so for god there's no limit as to how god blesses them so that is very important to god and that is one thing we need to you know make 
a top priority in our lives. And that's why you see many men of God, great men of God and women of God usually make altar calls. Why? Because they want to win souls for God. Knowing fully well that when they win souls for God, God gives them more power. More power to do so many things. Praise the Lord. So that is a challenge for you and I. And then look at Isaac. When there was famine, I think it's in Gerard or so, ordinarily, he would have looked up and go elsewhere. But what did God said, ask him to stay there. And what did he do? He stayed there. And during famine, what happened? This man sold. And what happened? The heavens was opened unto him. There is something I want us to tap in from there. I have forgotten that there is a portion in the Bible that says, He that withhold it tended to poverty. And that's very true. Our God is a generous God. Our God, in fact, you cannot add give God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. You see, we should learn to be generous. We should learn to open up. We should learn to give to God. We should learn to give to everyone that is in need. We should learn because the more you give, the more that comes in unto you. But when you, you are tight-fisted, you know, that's why when some people begin to rationalize tight, I just laugh. I don't need anybody to give me so much, too much sermon about uh, tight. It's in the Bible, it's in the scripture. And when you, there's a principle that if you use it, it works. You know, giving tight is a demonstration of the faith that you have in God. And then you are trying to say that God has, is God that has given me all this. So what is, if God has given you this and you are just giving 10%, some people even give more than 10%. Yeah. He said, when you do that, God, you are provoking blessings from God. With or without you, God will do what he has planned to do. So it is a privilege if you do things for God, if you give to God. Why? Because he owns everything anyway. He owns all the gold, all the silver. So if you refuse to give to him, somebody else will give to him and will take the blessings. So as Christians, we must learn, honestly speaking, the secret to riches is by giving. And that is why that's a principle. That's why it has nothing to do whether you are a believer or you are not. For as long as you are somebody that gives, it comes back unto you. And that's a challenge for us Christians. Because I know that that practice is more pronounced among Muslims. Muslims, if you want to face, they, they, they give. And then that is why most sometimes, somehow, when you want to look at, apart from the Israelis, because they are, they are a blessed race, even though we are also part of the Israelites. I'm talking about the real Israelites. Every world. Most rich men, most of those that are very rich today, they are Israelites. And that, they are Israelis. And it's understandable. Why? Because God has blessed them. Anywhere they go. Even in America, when you look at the history, when you look at every, virtually everywhere in the whole world, why? Because God has blessed them. Then after that, the Arabs, the Muslims too, they are rich. Why? Because they are generous. They give. So it's a principle that we Christians, we should even know better because it is in the Bible. God has commanded it and we see example of people that do it and what God, what they get in return. So we should be the people that should be out uppermost. So that is the principle we need to use. Gone are those days that you say as poor as the church rat. No. The rats in the churches now because you have fantastic beautiful churches. You have big fat rats in our churches because there's money. We are not uh, poor people again, like those days they say, that's why they say, as poor as the church rat. No, that is <laughs> an imagery of poverty. But we are not poor again. I'm, I'm very sure that 
the rats that will be in our churches now will be very fat rats because there's money everywhere. There's a lot of food that for them to take. Praise the Lord. So, what I'm just trying to say, it sounds funny, but the point I'm just trying to make is that we must, we must learn to give. When you give, God blesses you the more. And giving to God is a demonstration of the faith you have in God. You are saying it loud and clear that everything I have was given unto me. So when you give back to God, there is nothing bad about it. So please, for those of us who are not paying our tithe, we are shooting ourselves in the leg. We are shooting ourselves in the leg because when you do that, you God, aside from blessing you, he will take away divorce from your income. And that is why you may be handing so few but you'll be able to make an appreciable progress with the little that you have. And but for somebody, may be handing so much, and yet some calamity will be taking away those resources from them. So why don't we do it? Praise the Lord. Uh, I, I want to end with us reading some scriptures. Psalm 119 verse 11. Psalm 119 verse 11. It's a very popular Bible passage too. Psalm 119, verse 11. That word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. It's a popular Bible passage that I love so much. Always pray for God to give you the ability to keep the word of God in your heart. And that the only way you can do is when you read and meditate in it day and night. So that when the uh, troubles of this world, when you are faced or challenged with the troubles of this world, that word of God is the one that what always puts you in bay and puts you in the right course and will not allow you to fall off. Psalm 37 verse 25. Psalm 37 verse 25. Psalm 37, verse 25. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. Hmm. Hmm. So let's just, wherever we are, let's ask God to make that Bible passage to come to bear in our lives. He has promised us that he will never forsake us and will never beg for bread. He said, Father, you have promised me. You said from ages past you will never forsake the righteous and the righteous will not what? Beg for bread. Father, None of my generation will beg for bread. Father, I will not beg for bread. My children will not beg for bread. My children's children will not beg for bread. In the name of Jesus, you will never forsake me in times of, tr in times of trouble. Because your word says, you are my helper in ages past, and you are my helper in times of need. Lord, do not forsake me, and Lord, do not... <laughs> Allow me, I, will, I shall not beg for bread. In the name of Jesus, I won't beg for bread. My children will not beg for bread. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will bless my house. You will bless everything that concerns us. You will bless the work of our hands. In the mighty name of Jesus, misfortune will not be our portion. Poverty will not be our own portion. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And the Lord has blessed, okay, this is what uh, Isaac servant said. He said, and the Lord had blessed my master greatly, and he has become great. And he had given his flocks and head and silver and gold and men servants and men servants. God blessed Isaac so much that they said they were afraid of him. Lord, bless your people to the point that everybody will see it, that it is you that have done it to, the, to, their glo to your glory. And to the shame of the devil. Take away poverty from our lives. Help us to keep your words in our hearts. So that we shall not falter. We shall not fall. And we shall not fail. In the name of Jesus.
Please send me a round of some. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Father. Continue to pray that the Lord will bless us, bless our generation, that we will never beg bread according to his words. In, in that scriptures we just read, Father, we will not beg bread. Our generation will not beg bread. Your children will not beg bread. My family, my children, my grandchildren, family, Father, Lord, the families of this church, press house, Montgomery, Alabama, we will not beg bread, Father, because you are in control of all things. Lord, give us the grace, O oh Lord, to abide in thy words that has been spoken to us this evening, that we will obey you, that your blessing will rest upon us. And the Bible says, because you have blessed us, it would lead to our riches, it will reach to our wealth, and indeed, it will not come with sorrow. Father, Lord, that will be our portion in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Father. Blessed be your holy name. Thank you for the words that we have received this evening. Let your words abide and let your children, Holy Father, proclaim them in the name of Jesus. Thank you, my Father. Blessed be your holy name. Glory be unto you, Lord. Our Father, we thank you. We bless you. Hallelujah. We give you honor. We give you glory. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. 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 Uh, we will tell as that those who have, you know, not uh, uh, given their life to Jesus Christ is always an opportunity. Any opportunity we have, we talk about winning souls for Christ. This is an opportunity for you to proclaim the word of God and be a partaker of the blessing because that is the only way you're going to be blessed. So therefore, if you are if you want to give your life to Christ, all you need to do, ask for mercy of God. Thank God for forgiveness of our sins, Lord. I say, Father, I forgive. I ask for your forgiveness. Father, Lord, I know that you are the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You died for my sin, and indeed, you resurrected. Because the Bible says if we confess his name and believe in our heart that Jesus was raised from the dead. He said we will be saved. That is our portion in the name of Jesus. If you confess him in, with your mouth and believe in your heart that the Lord Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, you have been saved, you have received salvation, and that will be your portion. Just thank God for that and uh, promise to, to serve him, and indeed, you have received salvation tonight. God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We bless you. Amen. Glory be unto your holy name for all of us who have been, who have come to you before. Lord, we ask that, Lord, your mercy will continue to uh, be with us, that your glory will continue to arise and manifest in our life every blessed day. This blessing will be our portion today, where that we will be successful in every area of our life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name we have prayed. Uh, every uh, time we have opportunity in Bible stories like this, we ask that we we give, we do the donations, offering uh, through your give the five apps in your phone. Please give, give, give. The Bible say it is better to give than to receive. Go ahead and log into rccgpressers.org for those who have you know no icon of uh, give the five. Go straight and give, you know, slash donation. Then you can give from your PayPal. And if you want to mail physically, mail your check to RCCG Press House, uh, 6240 Blue Breaker, Bolivar, Montgomery, Alabama, 3661. That would also be acceptable. We thank you for giving. We ask that the Lord that blesses Isaac for sowing a seed. Anytime you give to God, you are sowing a seed for the ministry. You are sowing a seed for your family. You are sowing a seed. And the harvest will be imag unimaginable great for you. As he blesses Isaac, so shall he bless you in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for giving. Thank you for your children that give. And that you are, as you bless them, the work of their hands shall, pro shall prosper in every area of their life. Thank you, Holy Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. 
uh, let's share the grace together. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Have a good evening. God bless you. Yes.